dear students we request all of you to join the meeting with your register number followed by your name students kindly rename your identity with the register number and your name madam audio vand na madam audio seriya kekka mattidu madam sir ipo kekkuda am sir ஆ இப்ப கேக்குது மேடம் நான் கொஞ்சம் சவுண்டா இது பண்ணீங்கனா இல்ல மைக் கேக்க பக்கத்துல வச்சீங்க ஓகே ஓகேங்க சார் ஓகேங்க சார்
dear students we will start the program by 2 minutes please kindly ask your friends if they have not joined to join fast we are about to start the program Hello, ma'am. On, on. good afternoon students we are happy to welcome you all for our inaugural function and now i request sai shweta to start the program a very warm and healthy afternoon to all dignitaries guests and delegates with great joy and immense exultation great things happen when there is a gathering of great minds it's a privilege and pleasure to extend our welcome to all present here for this auspicious inauguration of priyakas association activities 2020 to 2021 now i would like to call upon ms s vijayalakshmi of second bsc biotechnology to pray us all kaligal vaalum midamellam inda lai magal nalam purigiral kalvi amudam marulgiral challi challi tarugiral tirumagal ival karunai daanam marivadagam teerkudu selvam kalvi rendayum nam vaalvil onrai seerkudu vidya lakshmi varuga indru veenai neethi paaduvom Thank you, Vijayalakshmi. Greeting. 
the universal tradition that ought to bring profuse joy and pleasure to both givers and receivers. I would like to call upon Ms. K. Nandita of the DSC Biotechnology to welcome the gathering. A pleasant good afternoon to one and all. I hope all are safe staying home. I am very happy to welcome you all to the inauguration of Creactors Association Activities Academic Year 2020 to 2021. We all bow our head to the holiness of God who showered us with blessings. I am glad to welcome Tirke Palanisami Avargal, the correspondent, Congo Arts and Science College, who supports in all our activities and upliftment of the institution. We welcome you, sir. I am very happy to welcome Dr. N. Raman, sir, the principal, Congo Arts and Science College, who is the pillar for the development and welfare of our institution. We welcome you, sir. Next, I am very excited to welcome our special guest, Dr. Prashant Kumar Kandala, sir, staff scientist and senior postdoc, stem cell and macrophage biology lab, Center for Regenerative Therapies, Dresden, CRTD, Technical University, Dresden, TUD, at Germany. We welcome you, sir. I am very grateful to welcome Dr. C. Deepa, ma'am, head of department, biotechnology, enriching our academics through her tireless efforts. We welcome you, ma'am. I am very happy to welcome all the heads and staffs from other departments. I welcome all the teaching and non-teaching staffs from Department of Biotechnology. And I finally welcome all the students of Biotechnology. Thank you. Thank you, Nandita, for your humble and cheerful words. Strong roots produce beautiful flowers by supporting the trees strongly. So does our principal, sir. Supporting our institution and producing intellectual graduates. I request our correspondent, Sir Tiruke Palaniswami Avargal, to present the presidential address. Sir? Ma'am, good afternoon and all. I am a uh, pleasure to introduce our uh, uh, chief guest to you, a uh, new scientist from uh, uh, long ago. And uh, uh, I congratulate and uh, wish all the success for this department growth uh, through our uh, HOD Deepa, ma'am. And uh, I also congratulate all our uh, faculty and uh, teaching staff non-teaching staff, lab assistants for supporting for the growth of this uh, department. And uh, I am very much thank to the, all the students for giving a, uh, participating for this program and giving a leading success for this, uh, achieving in each and every goals for the supporting for the head, head and the lectures. I once again thank all of you and I uh, Thank very much for our principal, sir, Raman, sir, for giving uh, a very big hand for your uh, support to this department, particularly for this department. I, he supports very much uh, uh, to give and uh, bring it to a first position for in the South Zone. I thank you, all the participants, and I, I uh, welcome our special chief guest for this program to continue the program to get grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind words, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite the one who has been our guiding light and has always encouraged us to give the best. He makes the task of running this institution look so smooth as he effortlessly manages this mammoth task. I request our honorable principal, Dr. Yan Raman, sir, to felicitate the gathering. Dear student, uh, due to uh, work uh, in our college, sir was not able to join, but he has conveyed all his wishes and blessings for our uh, department uh, activities and for our department growth. So we will continue with the next. Uh, Sai Shweta? Sure, ma'am. Now I'd like to invite Ms. T. Shweta of the DSC Biotechnology, Secretary of Kriyakas Association 2019-2020, to end the activities of previous academic year. Good afternoon, everyone. Annual report for the academic year 2019 to 2020. The Department of Biotechnology was recognized and funded under DBT for College Scheme, and all the activities of the department were carried out under DBT Fund. The Department Association inauguration, Reactors 2019, and the guest lecture on plant biotechnology was held on 29 6, 2019, and the special lecture was given by 
Dr. P. Parameshwari Ma'am, Senior Scientist, ICAR, New Delhi. The following activities were conducted for third year students. Hands-on training program on mushroom cultivation was conducted in the month of August. An industrial visit was arranged for the third year students to Parley Biscuits Limited, Chennai in the month of August. And in the month of January, a workshop on animal handling was conducted. In the month of February, third year students were taken to Pasture Institute of India, Kunur as institutional visit. The following activities were conducted for second year students. A guest lecture on application of mathematics in biology was organized in the month of August. An industrial visit was arranged for the second year students to Central Silk Board Mysore in the month of August. And in the December 2nd, biotechnology students were taken to common effluent treatment plant, Sipcot, Perundray as a farm visit. A guest lecture on career opportunities in medical transcription was arranged in the month of February. The following activities were conducted for first year students. An induction program for first BSc biotechnology students was held in June month. Guest lecture during the celebration of International Year of Periodic Table for first BSc biochemistry, biotechnology and physics students was conducted in the month of August. An industrial visit was arranged to Central Leather Research Institute, CLRA and Birla Planetarium in the month of November. Hands-on training on histopathology and chromatography was conducted in January. In the month of January, first year students were taken to farm visit to Arvin Dairi Shitod. In the month of January, a guest lecture on emerging trends in computational chemistry was organized for first UG students of biochemistry, biotechnology and physics department. A workshop on bioinstrumentation was arranged. Hands-on training on hematology was arranged in the month of February. The following activities were conducted to UG biotechnology students. Competitions related to periodic table for DBT Star College Department students had conducted on 13 8, 2019. Science Fest, an inter-school science exhibition contest for school students was organized by DBT departments. The DBT departments of our college in association with Tamil Nadu Science Forum hosted district level 27th National Children's Science Congress 2019. School students from all over the districts presented their projects on the focal theme, science, technology and innovation for green clean and healthy nation. A guest lecture on importance of ISO auditing in food industries and career opportunities in ISO auditing was arranged for the UG students of biotechnology. A motivational talk was planned and executed in the month of December by DBT Star College departments on the topic focus, learn, grow and enjoy. In the month of January, the health club, a part of Reactors Association, organized BioFair, an exhibition of natural and value-added products. In the month of February, the department organized Insta Crackers, an intramural quiz competition for UG biotechnology students. An outreach program for self-help group on mushroom cultivation was organized in the month of February. In the month of February, National Symposium on Mitochondria in Health and Disease was jointly organized by Society for Mitochondrial Research and Medicine, SMRM India, and the Department of Biotechnology and Biochemistry. In the month of September, special talk on career opportunities in life science after graduation was arranged for third year and second year biotechnology students. Model presentation on nature and energy conservation was arranged for third year and second year biotechnology students. In the month of September, a guest lecture on enzyme kinetics and its regulation was arranged for first year and second year biotechnology students. A guest lecture and association valedictory function was conducted and races were distributed for winners of various activities organized by the association. Students' achievements. Ms. V. V. 2 of 3rd BSc Biotechnology completed summer research fellowship offered by Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National Science Academy, the National Academy of Sciences with a fellowship amount of rupees 25,000 under the guidance of, guidance of Dr. Ganesh Chandra Sago, Rajendra Memorial Research Institute of Medical Science, Patna, during June to July 2019. Five of our students, Ms. K. Nandini, Ms. M. Nityashri, Ms. P. Sweta, Ms. C. Geeta, and Ms. Mithila Srikant have successfully completed NPTEL CEC online certificate course in various streams. Participation by students. Our department students had actively participated in various international seminars, national conferences, entrepreneurship awareness camp, youth leadership summit, and workshops organized by different universities and institutions in and around Tamil Nadu. Active involvement of, was also found in online quiz competitions organized by the Ministry of Defense, Government of India. Students of our department had also enthusiastically participated in various clubs and forums of our college. Participation by faculty members. Faculties of the department were participated in an conference organized by Kongonado Arts and Science College and refresher program organized by Center for Education and Curriculum at Christ University, Bangalore. 
and had also participated in various national level events conducted by different universities. Thank you. Thank you, Sweka. Now, I'd like to call upon Dr. C. Deepa Ma, Head of the Department, Biotechnology, to introduce our Honorable Sister. Good afternoon, all. I am very happy to introduce the guest of today, Dr. Prashant Kumar Kandala, Staff Scientist and Senior Postdoc, Stem Cell and Macrophage Biology Lab, Technical University, Germany. He completed his UG and PG from Andhra Pradesh. He worked on skeletal muscle stem cells at Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB, Hyderabad. He did his PhD in Marie Curie University, Paris, in human skeletal stem cells on muscular dystrophy and on different diseases. From 2011, he is in Germany as postdoctoral fellow working in hematopoietic stem cells. He also worked in stem cell transplantation and infectious disease. He has published many research articles in reputed journals like Journal of Experimental Medicine, Nature, and many more. In 2018, he moved to the Technical University, where he joined at Center of Regenerative Medicine. He focused on stem cell biology and macrophage biology. He is also a very good teacher and takes care of master's students. Apart from these, he is also an all-rounder who knows classical dance, including Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi. He is a multi-faceted multi person, and we are very happy to have Dr. Prashant among us for this inaugural function. Dear Prashant. Hi. Um... You can take over the session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Deepa. It was a very kind introduction about me and good afternoon to all the students and others and first of all i would like to thank uh, thiru palani sami avargal uh, the correspondent and also the principal dr raman sir uh, for including me in this wonderful session uh, and also uh, special thanks to dr deepa to include me here it's it's a great pleasure to be included in this and it's wonderful to see all the evolvements and also um, everything like the work that are uh, being done here, even though during COVID-19 situations, so not to be disappointed, uh, like all the staff are also continuing to uh, motivate and also keep updated the students. It's really a great job. Thank you to one and all. Uh, uh, hopefully the total world will be uh, out of this uh, pandemic very soon. I pray to the Almighty God. So uh, let's move on to the today's topic. Uh, to share the screen. Uh, Dr. Prashad, uh, you can share your screen. Yeah, I'm trying to do, yes. Do you see yes. my screen? Yes, 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 yes. We can see, but uh, yeah. Yes, okay. uh, yeah, full screen. Full screen. Yeah, so uh, when, uh, please let me know if I am uh, fast or slow or whatever, and if my audio is not clear or anything, I can immediately uh, adjust accordingly. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, when Dr. Deepa approached uh, and explained about the students, uh, I thought about presenting uh, something very basics about the immunological aspects and the main thing will be like antigen presenting cells. This is the more basic, uh, it, it would be, um, so I thought this topic would uh, make sense about this session. So today I will present about this uh, topic. So before going into the topic, I would like to just say that throughout my research career, I was uh, mainly focused on the stem cells. So what, uh, and especially adult stem cells. So what is an adult stem cell? It can self renew to maintain its own population and also can differentiate into different cell types that are necessary in the body. And stem cells can be seen like, for example, there are many kinds of cells, stem cells in the body. 
from the bone marrow, fetal and the cord blood and also in the tissues like muscle and every like connective tissue and all the other tissues. These uh, stem cells are implicated in uh, cellular therapies uh, to encounter hematological malignancies and diseases of the immune system. They also participate in the regeneration and the repair and also they are implicated during aging. So this fascinated me to work about this thing and also to further focus about the differentiation of these stem cells into different cell types and especially myeloid compartment, which is like for you, if you know, it's macrophage kind compartment. So just to, okay. So just to tell you, so this is the, uh, do you see my cursor, Deepa? Yes, yes, Prashant, we are able to see your cursor. Okay, thank you. So uh, the, this is the hematopoietic stem cell and then it, it is called hematopoietic free in general. So what the stem cell first produces some progenitors and these differentiate into further downstream progenitors. And finally, you have all the immune cells. So basically you would have heard about macrophage, monocyte, uh, red, red blood cell, and also the lymphocytes in your uh, basic science in your previous classes. So all these cells are produced from the progenitors or upstream coming from the further progenitors and also from the stem cell. So this is the basic, uh, in a classical model, this occurs. But when there is a need in the body, this stem cell with the help of various signals in the body can directly produce different mature cells also. So today we can focus on this compartment where the stem cell goes towards the macrophages. So this is our main focus of the lab. Of course, I'll not go into those details, but my focus will be on antigen presenting cells, but I'll just give you a brief introduction. Why is this compartment very important in the immune protection? Sorry, the slide jumps. So if you see the stem cell can produce first monocytes, and these monocytes can become macrophages and reaches the tissue. So this tissue like in, in one pathway or, or these macrophages can also be derived from the embryo itself. When the embryo is forming, there are certain progenitors which produces macrophages and then they, they are maintained throughout the life. So the macrophages, they are present in all over the body and each macrophage is called differently. So the macrophages, for example, the macrophages residing in the bone marrow are called bone marrow derived macrophages and in the liver they are called Kupfer cells and in the lung they are alveolar macrophages. We can come to about alveolar macrophages at the end of the talk maybe if someone is interested but this these macrophages can be derived either embryonically or from stem cells or they can also self-maintain by proliferation. So and if you see the macrophages can aid in different functions such as tissue repair regeneration, cytotoxicity, tumor infiltration, phagocytosis and immune surveillance and also in the antigen presentation. So all these functions requires this the majorly the antigen presentation. Let's go for each example. So how does a macrophage goes in the tissue repair and regeneration? So for example, if you see during the evolution from a smallest organism to the biggest organism, the regenerative capacity is going down and the immune competition is also going down. Where if you compare to the fetus in the humans itself, the fetus will have high regenerative capacity, but the immune competence is low. But when there is, when the, at the adulthood, the immune competence is high, whereas the regenerative capacity is going down. So it's really interlinked. So it's very important to always think in this direction. When we talk, think about immunity, it always depends on the age of a person also. So if you, uh, for example, uh, here, when we see about heart regeneration in day-to-day -day life, you are uh, hearing about cardiac injuries or cardiac arrest or heart attack or anything. So what happens here? If there is an injury here, there are different 
methods of injuries, but here in the myocardial infarction, what happens? There is imm innate immune response and the stem cells immediately come into action and they produce the necessary macrophages. And in the macrophages, for example, in the case of young adults, like our neonatal kids, for example, when the macrophages form the new, uh, uh, it, it participates in angiogenesis and gives new cells and then there is a complete regeneration. Whereas in the adults, what happens, these macrophages are not completely uh, participating in this. There are other factors are involved and the fibrosis occurs instead of angiogenesis and this forms the scar here. So what happens when the scar is formed is there is no proper, um, sorry, the slide jump. So there is no proper functioning of the heart. When there is a scar, it forms a very tough tissue. So the heartbeat doesn't go on and it ends up. So let us see another example of phagocytosis and immune surveillance. So what happens in the human body? In the steady state, the bone marrow from the stem cells, the steady state myelopoiesis and lymphopoiesis occurs. So the production of myeloid cells is called myelopoiesis. Production of T cells, B cells and others is called lymphopoiesis. And when there is an infection, what happens due to during a bacterial or fungal or viral infection, it enters the bloodstream and then the stem cell reacts to it, it gets activated and then it produces more myeloid cells in the, in the first defense because these are in the in, innate immunity. So I'll come back to that topic soon, but just to remember, mention here, there are more macrophages and which come back here to uh, fight against this infection. So, and then in our lab, what we also was working was like, we found that there is a cytokine called myeloid cytokine, which is low in the steady state and it gets increased in the MCSF. So what do we see in the daily life? Like, like for example, in the case of uh, bone marrow transplantation, what happens that the patient is myeloablated, that means the host, immune system is depleted and you give new cells to produce new uh, immune system. So for example, the uh, stem cells are given. So our idea is as there is high MCSF seen during infection, what our idea was to give MCSF so that it can already boost this process. So imagine there are more macrophages before, after this, and when the infection occurs, it combats very easily and the patient is uh, saved easily. So this part of the work has been published in Journal of Experimental Medicine. And now we are going for clinical, clinical trials in Germany and also in France and Switzerland in collaboration with different projects. So this is also in this case, we found that macrophages play a major role. And then, so all these functions are mainly mediated by antigen presentation, especially the immune protection. So let's go into the details of antigen presenting cells. What, what are in general antigen presenting cells? So the main agenda of this talk would be like, I'll go through introducing some terms like innate immunity, adaptive immunity, and the different immune cells that are involved in this process, such as macrophages, dendritic cells, and natural killer cells, and the lymphocytes such as B and T cells. And, among, and then I will go on into further details because this process includes the major histocompatibility complex, class one and class two molecules. So let's go into details stepwise. So what happens when there is an infection? So when there is an infection, the microbes, for example, let us say microbe instead of bacteria, fungus, and virus in specific, we can call them a microbe. So when there is an infection, they cross the epithelial barriers and then send the signals. So through the blood, all the inflammatory signals are coming to the main phagocytes or the main things are called, so macrophages are the main police. For example, if let us sit, uh, sit back and think, if there is some crime in a city, what happens? Someone calls and says, hey, uh, someone calls to the police and say, hey, something is wrong here, please come here. Immediately the police come into action to see the first, uh, to solve the problem as soon as possible. So this is what the macrophage does. As soon as there is an infection, 
the first thing come into the action is macrophages and then later on this signals is sent to another cell type called dendritic cells and this further sends the signals to downstream uh, cells such as b cells and t cells so this is like a kind of if you can imagine in a scenario of something crime happens and how it is solved so or also at the national level if you think about a uh, like at the army level it goes the downstream like that so the first army is like macrophages so these are the macrophages coming into action and also they signal further another cells such as called natural killer cells because this can directly also engulf or kill the pathogen so this is called innate immunity so in the innate immunity the main actors are macrophages dendritic cells and natural killer cells let's then come to adaptive immunity what is meant by adaptive the name itself says it is adapted that means as soon as there are signals that gets by macrophages dendritic cells and natural killer cells and when they can't finish the job themselves what they what they do is they send the signals to other cell types such as b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes and that's where they come into the action so they are adapted to do some more functions so that's why it's called adaptive immunity so these are the two main uh, cells that are involved in adaptive adaptive immunity so let's go into details in one by one so first we can focus on b lymphocytes so what does a b lymphocyte do so when there is a microbe so it it is recognized by the b cell and it gets activated and then produces a lot of cells called plasma cells which in turn produces the antibodies and in turn this antibody again combats onto the uh, anti like uh, uh, this pathogen and it pro it further processes and takes it to t cells and then natural killer cells to kill it so in this process there are two things happening so one is uh, what is uh, so in this you have to remember an epitope is a very important uh determinant called it is antigenic determinant antigen is nothing that the protein or peptide that is present by the pathogen or microbe so the antigenic determinant is present on the and uh, on the pathogen and it is specifically recognized by the antigen binding side of the antigen receptor of for example b cell or t cell it has a receptor called b cell receptor or t cell receptor or in the case of b cells an antibody so this antigen uh, can be two kinds for example in a, it's called conformational determinant where it has a specific conformation and this binds to the receptor or antibody and then this is denatured and then de this denatured is normally recognized by the further uh, cell type i will come back to that later in the linear case of determinant it has like two two kinds of determinants one could be accessible one could be inaccessible because when the protein folds this this can be hided this determinant can be hid inside so what happens in this case is the receptor recognizes the accessible uh, determinant first and then in one way it denatures to expose the inaccessible determinant or in the other sense it can also further denature this protein completely so that's making the pathogen or macro microbe inactive for its uh, uh, pathogenicity for example so and let's go back to the t lymphocytes how does this go so in the case of b lymphocytes it goes through the plasma cells and produces antibodies and fight against the infection whereas the t cells they do it in a different way so the t cells they always bind either to b cell or other cell types such as macrophage or uh, dendritic cell and then further it becomes effector t cell and then further downstream it goes into the action so let's go more into detail so what happens so in contrast to b cell the that recognize free antigen t cells can't recognize a free antigen it needs to be presented this antigen to be presented by some molecules called mhc that's called major histocompatibility molecules 
which are present on the antigen presenting cells. So the main antigen presenting cells are macrophages, dendritic cells and B cells that present to the T cells. So when there is only T cell and there is antigen, there is no T cell response. But when there is T cell, there is an antigen and then the antigen presenting cell, this peptide epitope of antigen is presented by APC is recognized by the T cell and then this T cell response is present. Let's focus on this part mainly. So what happens in so, and then it's also not every peptide can be important in this presentation. For example, when the, like, uh, for example, this is a pathogen peptide or the, from the microbe coming, what happens? A macrophage engulfs it by endocytosis. It forms a phagosome and then completely breaks down all the pep protein, like all the uh, infective parts of all the pathogens. Then it produces, it gives certain various types of peptides. So when this kind of peptide comes here, the T cell response won't occur. But when an active or immunodominant epitope is shown by this MHC class, this green colored thing is called MHC molecule. So on the macrophage, when this MHC molecule presents this epitope to the T cell, then it gets activated. So in this case, you have already seen, it's specifically the T cell, which is expressing a glycoprotein, which is called a complex of differentiation four plus. So in immunology, this is a very complex thing, but each cell type, you can uh, recognize them with specific markers, which are expressed on their surface of their cells. And this can also be isolated by a technique called flow cytometry. Maybe in further classes, your staff will explain how this technique is done, or maybe you have got introduction already. But every immune cell can be isolated, recognizing these markers. So what happens, like when the epitope is presented, the CD4 cell get activated and it proliferates to combat the infection. So let us see more in detail. So if there is no antigen, there is no antigen peptide response. And not only antigen is needed, it also needs co-stimulation. So here, for example, there is a foreign body which is recognized by MHC class molecule and on the T cell, there is a T cell receptor, but this is not at enough to activate the T cell response. So what is needed for a T cell response is both antigen and a co-stimulation. For example, here, the pathogen is broken down into peptides and this is presented by the MHC class molecule to the T cell receptor. And parallelly, there is a connection which is called co-stimulation occurs. For example, the CD28 on T cell is recognized by CD80 or CD86, which is a marker uh, like M2 marker, which can present macrophage marker. So for example, and it can further cross present and then there is a T cell activation. So this is in, uh, so it needs the first signal, which is the binding of this complex, and then the co-stimulation, which is necessary, this one, the second. Then the activated T cell really functions on the pathogen and it kills the pathogen. So let's go to the uh, major histocompatibility complex. What are these? So these are the human leukocyte antigen. Maybe you have you would have come across in the case of bone marrow transplantation, people would be talking about, ah, do you get a donor, HLA matched donor? So this is what human leukocyte antigen. So when the HLA, like earlier days, you have to give only, like for example, in the autologous transplantation, you have to give from the same patient to the same patient cells. Whereas nowadays the advances are more in the allogenic transplantation models where you can give, uh, if the HLA is matched on the both, like the patient and the donor, you can use. So this would, you would have come across. So there are two kinds of molecules, class one and class two molecules. And the class one molecules are especially recognized by T cells, which express CD8. And class two molecules are expressed by CD8 
T cells, for example, lymphocytes in CD. So in this way, you can also divide class, MHC class one and class two. At the same time, this pathways can be divided into CD8 T plus T cell response or CD4 T, T cell response. And then this one is mainly expressed on all nucleated cells, whereas this molecule is expressed only on mononucleated phagocytes, such as monocytes, dendritic cells, B cells, endothelium, and thymic epithelium. So that's why this is the major response that occurs when there is a very dangerous infection or when there is severe infection. This is a kind of response occurring when there is a particular kind of pathogen is infecting the body. So let's go further. So the three major types of MHC class two plus antigen presenting cells for T cell activation or function, let us see one by one how they function. For example, first take, let us take, this is the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell recognizes the pathogen and then it presents on the MHC, like once it is internalized in the cytosol, it breaks down the peptides and through the MHC class molecule, it presents the epitope. And this is recognized by the naive T cell and this naive T cell becomes, divides and becomes effector T cells and these proliferate in function. And what happens, the macrophages in the parallel E also can recognize this pathogen do endocytosis and breaks down all the peptides and it increases its MHC class two and then it can pro uh, present more robustly the epitopes onto especially the effector T cells which were al already activated. They recognize this cross presentation and then they further kill all the microbe because of this reaction. So what happens in the case of B cell? This is a third MHC. So the MHC class two is present as soon as it recognizes the pathogen. And then it turns it, it with the help of effector T cells, it activates. Then effector T cells send some signals uh, such as cytokines, for example, these secreted factors further um, activates the B cell to become a plasma cell. And this plasma cell will produce the antibodies which are streaming in your blood. So these are the three kinds of uh, MHC class two pathways that is occurring in this kind of uh, infection. So let us see if you see on the B cells, they are highly efficient antigen presentation due to specific capture of antigens via the B cell receptor. So this is what happens. So when the macrophages sees the extracellular antigen, the antigen will be en endocytosed and then presented on this CD4 T helper lymphocytes. Then this further produces the cytokines and then macrophage activation occurs, destruction of phagocytosed antigen. This is one way. In the other way, the B cell takes this extracellular antigen, then the B cell after internalization goes to the T cell, which is the T helper cell in this case. And then this also produces the I mean, cytokines and then the B cell produces the plasma cells, which gives antibodies. And then this B cell antibody secretion will kill the antibody, the, the bind to the antigen, and then it will make inactivate. So in one way, it can internalize and kill. And in the other way, the antibodies can bind to the peptides and block its effect are functions of these peptides which are produced by the pathogens. So the, that is what you have seen on the, sorry. So this is where you have seen on the MHC class two presentation and in, in overview MHC class one, what happens? There is a cytosolic antigen. There is no endoso endocytosis or anything the antigen directly enters the cell membrane and is present in the cytoplasm of the cell. And this one is recognized. And then what happens, MHC class one molecule is coming up like expressed more on the cell membrane and this will present the epitope. And then the here in this case, the cytotoxic T lymphocyte, which is CD8 positive T lymphocyte 
recognizes this epitope and then further kills the antigen uh, expressing target cell. So in this case, the for example, if there is a macrophage, the CD8 cytotoxic T lymphocytes even kill the macrophages. That's why when there are only, let, let's say there is a, a hundred macrophages are coming into the first defense, they are killed in this method. So what happens? The body loses the macrophages. So what? Then further, the body recognized, the signals are sent to dendritic cells, which can further go through the bloodstream and reaches the lymph nodes and then activates the B cells and T cells. So these are the two MHC class one and class two pathways that occur. So this is MHC class one structure. If you want to know in detail, of course, this is more detail. Uh, but just to make you cu curious, I wanted to show like how they look. So each molecule, they have different peptide chains. So they have different substructures. And for MHC class two, the substructure is like this. So if you want to see further in the class one, a peptide of nine to 11 amino acids can fit. And in the class two, 12 to 24 amino acids can be presented like as an epitope can be presented to the T cells. So this is what in, a, as in an overview, you can see there is a T cell receptor and this is the MHC class molecule. So we are going deep by deep from a cellular level to the molecular level and at the MHC class level. So stepwise at MHC class two looks like this. So there is a first contact made is by T cell contact residue of peptide. So this is the main peptide that is presented and the, you can see there is an, at each level, there is a kind of lock and key kind of mechanism happening and there is a recognition particular. So that's why one particular kind of MHC class can be recognized by particular receptors of T cells because there are hundreds of receptors that are exposed on T cells. And then there is a specific signal coming from specific molecule that is recognized. So that's why there is a specific action going on. So what is the physiological significance of these MHC associated antigen presentation? Let's go into the little bit more detail. So there are two kinds of presentation. One is extracellular and another is cytosolic antigens like just use uh, saw to different T cell subsets. For example, in the case of class one, it is cytosolic and then it aids to the killing of pathogen. And in class two, like these, these ones, just now I gave all the details in above slides and I'm just summarizing here. So the MHC class one molecule associated presentation occurs through cytosolic agent and it, in, it, it uh, culminates in killing of antigen expressing target cell. And in the second case, which is class two molecule associated presentation, the extracellular antigen is presented to the T helper cell, which produces the cytokines and the killing occurs in two different ways, either by uh, internalization and through phagosome and then killing by phagosomal activity or the antibodies binding to it and making it inactive. So, what are the cell biological mechanisms uh, that can occur in these two cytosolic and extracellular antigens? It all depends. So it is yet to be um, studied in various diseases. For example, even in the case of COVID-19, people are trying to understand what happens uh, in that kind of uh, situation. What are the mechanisms that are involved? Once we understand the mechanism, it is very easy to find a vaccine or to find uh, anything against it. So let's talk that later. So just to see separation of two major intracellular compartments by mem membrane. So this, if you imagine this is a cell, so this is the nucleus and nucleus has a nuclear membrane and there is one more nuclear uh, membrane body which is called Golgi apparatus. So for example, when there is a secretory vesicle is there, it endos like, for example, okay, let's see first here. So when there is a pathogen coming in this, it goes into endosome, it forms endosome, and then it forms a phagosome, and then which releases a lysosome enzyme, which makes the environment acidic so that the peptides are broken down. 
So then it's called in, in particular case of macrophage, it is called phagolysosome here. And then further it is presented and killed. This is one way. Whereas in the secretory vesicle method, it happens what happens like in the uh, Golgi apparatus, it processes the peptides that it takes, then it secretes the, uh, through the secretory vesicle, it secretes all the peptides that could be presented for further downstream. So these are the two, two major things that uh, are important is cytosol, which is this one, and vesicular system, this one. So the pathogens are very clever. Either they can infect the cytosol or through the membranes. So let us see what are the cytosolic pathogens that do. The, so the cytosolic pathogens, they all always occupy or attack the cell, uh, cell uh, plasma, uh, the space, and then they eat up all the things that are present. So that's how they can kill. But these, uh, when presented, these are mainly presented by MHC class one, like you saw earlier, through the CD8 T cells, and then it occurs when they are attacking the cytosol, the total cell. For example, in this case, the macrophage leads to cell death. Whereas when the presentation is through intravesicular pathogens, for example, in the vesicles, for example, in these small pockets, if the macro, uh, like, let's see an example of macrophage here. So it goes through the endocytic vesicles and mainly MHC class two is activated and then CD4 T helper cells and effector cells are involved and then they become activa activated to kill intravesicular bacteria and parasites. And in the third case, extracellular pathogens and then toxins, for example, they produce certain molecules which are recognized by the uh, B cells in this case, for example, they get internalized and this is processed and then they are presented through MHC class two molecules. And then these are recognized by CD4 T plus uh, cells and then activation of B cells to secrete immunoglobulin to eliminate extracellular bacteria or toxins occurs. So these are the mechanisms that going through So let us see the overview. So very simple, the antigen presentation occurs by three different uh, cells mainly. They, are, they, can, they can be from innate or adaptive immune system. In, from the innate immune system, macrophages and dendritic cells are the ones which pre present with MHC class two molecules. And then from the adaptive system, B cells are the ones which present the MHC class two molecules. And they have the, these are the three ones, they are called antigen presenting cells. They present the antigens or the epitopes from the pathogen or microbe to the effector cells such as called lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. And if this is occurring through when the peptide occupies the cytosolic protein, the peptides in cytosol is broken by proteasome. And this one is, first the MHC class two is internalized. And when the epitope binds here, it is shown by like, so first the, the peptides in the cytosol, they enter through the, pro, like here, I forgot to mention you, it, it's, it's more details. It's not necessary, but still, I just wanted to know how you can ask, how come a cytosolic protein can enter the endoplasmic reticulum so here there are uh, certain uh, proteins called TAP proteins. They, were, they will be closed in the beginning, but these peptides, they are very, uh, when they recognize certain bonding, they enter through these TAP proteins and enter the cyto, uh, endoplasmic reticulum to occupy and kill all the, um, all the cell. So what happens initially, the endoplasmic reticulum, it has MHC class one internalized and it is produced here. Once this is there is a perfect match for this, what happens? The endoplasmic reticulum, in a, another way, it sends out into the vesicles, and then this vesicles is expressed on the cell membrane, uh, and then the MHC class one uh, is presenting the epitope to, to the CD8 plus T lymphocytes. So this is called MHC class one pathway, and in the next case. When there is a endo, like a extracellular protein, they are internalized 
they form an endosome and then the endosome uh, like the cell produces also the lysosome which enters lysosome enzyme which enters this endosome and then further it makes the ph acidic and then this will break down this peptide into small epitopes or small peptides then this one combines to phagosome and it forms phagolysosome then further what happens meanwhile parallelly the endoplasmic reticulum is preparing the mhc class 2 with an invariant chain and this one is it, it sends out into a kind of phagosome and then it fuses to form a phagolysosome so where this particular mhc class 2 is when there is a matching for the dominant or uh, dominant peptide it recognizes it binds to it then this one is presented on the cell membrane and then the mhc class 2 molecule presents the epitope to the cd4 plus t cells so this is called class 2 mhc pathway so in the class 1 mhc pathway the main thing you have to remember is the pathogen is cytosolic and then mhc class 1 molecules are present on the membrane and T lymphocytes such as CD8 positive cells will come into action. In the class 2 pathway, the extracellular protein, MHC class 2, and then CD4 plus T lymphocytes. So this is very easy to understand like that. So anyway, I have just um, made a chart for you. Maybe I can share this later, comparing the MHC class 1 pathway and MHC class 2 pathway, how the different features vary in these cells. So I can share these things with uh, Dr. Deepa later and she can share with you all. So this is our lab, very fun loving lab all the time. And I'm sitting here, think like the concept of this box is like, we say it's like think out of the box. So you have to, you are in the box always, but you have to think out of the box. So thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, it was a very nice presentation explaining all the basic details about uh, uh, immunology. And I hope all our students uh, would have enjoyed your session. And now, uh, dear students, the session is open for discussion. And if you want to uh, ask any questions, you can put it in the chat box. You can type your questions in the chat box so that it will be presented to the other guests for which you will get the answers. Hope I didn't bore anyone. <laughs> no, no, <definitely. laughs> Our students didn't run away. <laughs> <laughs> they are still here. They are still here. <laughs> uh, feel free to interact. Don't hesitate. Anyone can uh, also write their questions or anything related. Or even if you didn't un understand some particular part, whatever it is. So, uh, Prashant, I just want to ask one question. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, how many days will they take for uh, that HLA matching? Like you were telling about when bone during bone marrow transplantation, we they go for HLA matching. So yeah. usually what is the procedure like what uh, how many days they take and so oh, it's few change? hours. Now, nowadays, there are so many ELISA kits. Uh, they can do it very quickly within few hours here. Even in India, it's well advanced. And uh, uh, they, like uh, the doctors are much more advanced, I would say, in India because they are very famous for this. That's why many doctors, they are hired in US also. So uh, this matching is really done very quick, actually. But the only problem is the test is very faster, but uh, the getting the right person, right donor is very rare. That's why it's very difficult. For example, when people go for organ transplantation also, this is very important that the matching of the HLA is very important. HLA or MHC is uh, very important between these two patients. Okay. So we but have the, normally it's done in within few uh, like one day normally. Okay. Okay, and uh, we have another question from uh, one of our students, Ritu. Uh, like she wants to know 
like uh, MSc class one and MSc class two, which one is evolved first? Okay, so uh, for example, you saw that MSc class one is specific. It's not about which one first or which one second. If you want to ask between uh, yeah, like innate and adaptive immunity, the innate immunity is first and the adaptive immunity is second. In the case of MSc class one and class two, the main difference is what kind of pathogen or what kind of microbe is present. If a microbe is cytosolic, that means a microbe can enter uh, a macrophage or dendritic cell through the membrane and can sit inside the cytoplasm and can enjoy like a kind of, <laughs> it's like uh, it can home there and then they, it feels like, ah, okay, I have reached here so I can attack this cell. So if a peptide or pathogen goes into cytosol, this leads to MHC class one pathway. But if there is a pathogen which is not uh, faster or robust, for, for example, uh, because you also have to think in a way, for example, when you are, um, that's why people say cleanliness is more important, all these things. So there are two things. So if you have 100 molecules of bacteria, maybe the MSC class two will be faster because the first macrophages come into action. They eat bacteria, kill the bacteria very fast. There are like say 1 million bacteria attacking your body. So in this case, what happens, the available macrophages first it come into action. They can kill all whatever is possible, like 100 or 200 or 1000, for example. What happens to the rest of the bacteria, which is still is aggressive, then the macrophages or dendritic cells, if they are not able to do their job, the, the, immune, the innate immune cells, if they can't do their job immediately, they send signals to the adaptive cells. So this is a kind of stepwise process. So what comes first is all depends on the pathogen. Thank you, Prashant. And students, do you have any more queries? Even if it is going to be a basic question, it's okay. Yeah, please don't worry. Uh, you can ask any, any, any kind of question. <laughs> don't worry. You can. It's always good to interact because when you start interacting, you learn more. You should remove your inhibitions. Then only you will learn more. So the enthusiasm will be more. So feel free to ask. Don't think someone will laugh at you. Someone will uh, smile at you. No, don't think about anyone else. Just think about you. You want to learn something, just go ahead and attack the person. That's it. <laughs> attack with your questions. Beat any teacher. Okay. So we have another question. I think they are motivated by your words. And uh, uh, the question is, when do gut bacteria change into a pathogen? When do gut bacteria change into, change a, into a pathogen? Okay, it's a very good question. Uh, so normally, we know there is a good bacteria and back, bad bacteria, right? So what are good bacteria? Let's give one example. For example, lactobacillus, which comes from your milk. So the lactobacillus is called good bacteria, but because it can produce certain enzymes which can break down certain proteins that is helpful for our body and it can assimilate and it is useful for our development. There is a bad bacteria, for example, uh, a shigella uh, or some other uh, very dangerous pathogens like may, may not be bacteria only. Let us say aspergillus, a fungus. When, so aspergillus, where do you see aspergillus? Can anyone answer? You do. You see this every day in your life, aspergillus fungus. Okay, I will tell you. In your house, you have kept some food, and you forgot. Okay, someone uh, forgot the food somewhere in your corner. Uh, maybe you made a vada, for example, and or some bread, and you forgot on a table or in, in some corner. Next day or day day after tomorrow, if you realize and see, there is a green thing growing on it. Did you come across that? Most of it is called aspergillus species, so the fungus. So what happens sometimes, this, this you can see when it is green and for growing like a kind of big uh, lump, you can easily see this uh, green thing and you can immediately say, ah, okay, 
uh, it's gone it's it's rotten so you will throw into the dustbin imagine there is only 10 spores on the food so you have kept you were talking to someone uh, so you were you are amma calls something and you said do do this job first so you leave the plate or go somewhere so accidentally some air passes and then there are some fungal spores sitting on it what happens so this you will eat already so this is also a kind of bacteria or fungus that you are going into your gut for example so this one when it goes in lesser quantity it's fine but imagine if the, if you and like if you take it inside and by chance you have you were already not so immune uh, like uh, immunely healthy or something what happens this pathogen after entering your body they increase in your gut they multiply they multiply they multiply and then they become beat bacteria fungus or virus whatever they increase and then they take over the gut so this is bad, bad bacteria and certain bacteria for, uh, such as e coli for example escherichia coli there it can act good or bad for example if they are in a certain amount in your gut it always helps for the assimilation of your digested products or whatever it is in your small and large intestine but when escherichia coli increases in numbers and becomes too much aggressive it can be very dangerous for you it can lead to diarrhea and some other problems so there is uh, that's why you can say the the gut has certain capacities to keep the good bacteria but if you replace it with some other bad bacteria then it can be harmful for you so there is always a kind of balance that you have to maintain that's why we are always asked to do uh, like healthy habits to keep healthy to run to exercise so that your body maintains certain good bacteria in you and certain physiological things in a normal way so eat healthy Uh, uh like drink healthy uh, for example they will not ask uh, don't drink any way anything anywhere so this is these are the reasons that they say so until certain level the back gut bacteria is always good but when you replace it with certain pathogens which are coming from outside then even your good bacteria can't help you it it can go in a negative way okay. so we have another question what happens when phagocytosis fails what happens when phagocytosis, when phagocytosis fails okay so uh, it's also another good question so that's what i showed you in one of the slides so phagocytosis when does uh, when does this first occur in the innate immune response so when there is a pathogen the macrophage come into action it engulfs the uh, pathogen and then uh, it forms endo uh, through endocytosis it forms phagosome lysosome phagolysosome and then it kills the bacteria so this process is called phagocytosis so what happens when this fails that's what i already explained a bit so what uh, when the macrophage can't phagocytose these cells the it sends some certain signals to other cells such as natural killer cells or dendritic cells it sends uh, some uh, like it secretes certain molecules or certain proteins uh, let's say cytokines it, they are called cytokines so they send some certain cytokines to activate dendritic cells for example macrophages or monocytes if they can't phagocyte enough what they produce they can produce interferon gamma which is also a like secreted molecule the interferon gamma then goes to natural killer cells and it says hey uh, the macrophage is not able to do its job so uh, just uh, okay do your job so that's what the interferon goes to the mac uh, natural killer cell and then a natural killer cell gets activated and it do it does its job in a different way it goes to the uh, region of infection it sees ah oh, okay there are so many pathogens here i have to take care of them so they will go and kill all the uh, kill the virus or uh other uh, aggressive fungus for example in all in most of the bacterial or fungal cases the ma macrophages are more effective already but in certain viral uh, cases when they are aggressive 
the back uh, the macrophages can't do their job enough so in this case the natural killer cells will also come into action and the natural killer cells the name itself explains they are naturally killing so they are their job is to kill so they can kill all kinds of viruses mostly and even imagine certain cases they also don't have enough natural killer cells that that's where the body reacts in a different way and the the patient dies due to sepsis means different kinds of infections so in the case of in, uh, sepsis this is what happening whatever the question you ask this is seen in the case of sepsis uh, sepsis is a kind of uh, clinical condition where the patient dies because of several infections so that's that's what happens in this case very good question so how phagocytosis happens in case of autoimmune disorders uh okay so this is the very critical thing in one of our uh, institute in our institute one of the lab is also working on this uh, such as uh, autosomal uh, uh, diseases for example here for example in the case of phagocytosis it goes in a negative way they there the macrophages or something in the transplantation studies this is what you see when the cell of our immune, immune system doesn't recognize the foreign body then it it will attack but when it recognizes then it it does its job in a right way so this is what happens in the autosomal diseases it it will be unable to recognize its own thing and it's it's the, if it is foreign so that's why these people with autosomal disorders they are affected in a adverse way if you enhance the phag phagocytosis for example okay so actually one more person has asked the question i think you have responded you, your answer is there uh, already like when few people have autoimmune response uh, whether they have higher immune response so i think uh, you have already answered for that also so uh, one more continu uh, continuation of the previous like do gut uh, when do the gut bacteria becomes a pathogen so they have asked uh, like uh, so it can be only replaced like pathogens can only be replaced it cannot destroy itself like autoimmune disease uh your voice was breaking can you please repeat sorry hello can you hear yeah. me yeah can now i can me? hear you okay like uh, it is the continuation question for uh, the student who asked uh, whether gut bacteria can be converted into a pathogenic bacteria so now she is asking so it can only be replaced so it cannot be destroyed itself like autoimmune disease Mhm. Mm yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, someone also asked whether secondary infection Second are Nara. fatal. Yes. Uh, I know there is. Sorry, there is one more before. Can we control the regeneration of the cells and also the production of macrophages? Hmm, that's a good question, and uh, for sure we can control this <laughs> uh, based on now. That's what the treatments are focusing on. So, uh, for example, in the clinics, when people were, are particularly, um, let's uh, talk about the dis, uh, muscular dystrophies. Uh, in these patients, what happens? The muscle, like you have, you, there is no normal development. for example the cells that are forming the muscle is called myoblast so when they proliferate and then fuse to form myofiber and many myofibers form to form bundles called muscle fibers and the different muscle fibers form muscle so this is normal in a healthy healthy uh, person but in the patient of muscular dystrophies this is not happened and there is the mu the muscle is very weak and in certain muscular dystrophies even the child dies within 5 years so what in this case what happens is people are trying to improve the condition of the child by various methods so you can transplant uh, you can do cell therapies or gene therapy for example uh, so when you do or genetic modification of certain uh, certain things in the body so what happens in the cell therapy you transplant cells and then the regeneration of the cells occurs there and then particularly you can improve this so this is a case of muscle for your question was related to production of macrophages so that's what where we do in the bone marrow transplantation for example to treat cancers what happens like there is a patient with cancer coming to the hospital 
so what the doctors do they first do irradiation or chemotherapy to deplete his own immune system then they find the right donor and then they transplant these stem cells or bone marrow stem cells they, it's called these stem cells once they are transplanted that's what they regenerate to form different uh, cells and imagine the hospitals even though you feel they are super clean but not really in the many kinds of infections occur even after transplantation of cells even though the transplantation is successful in a patient but the patients might die due to different infections which is also termed as sepsis so uh, once the patient is uh, transplanted with stem cells what happens in the hospital they they the 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 stem cell it takes time uh, for example it takes 30 days to produce macrophages uh, 40 days to produce uh, b cells and dendritic cells and other cells and then uh, within 30 40 days and natural killer cells are also produced from the donor derived stem cells and then it takes 60 to 80 days to produce t lymphocytes so that's why that's why different kinds of infection can kill a patient at different times imagine there is a bacterial infection within 13 30, uh, 30 days to 40 days what happens already the stem cells are produ producing these macrophages they do their job imagine there is a viral infection so there is not enough for a macrophage to do the job it needs natural killer cells so that's why the natural killer cells are also coming into action imagine this is also not sufficient they also need t lymphocytes to do the job so what happens at the 30 to 50 days if the severe viral infection occurs this patient dies because there are no t lymphocytes because the kinetics of uh, differentiation or forming cells from the stem cells are different so that's why nowadays in certain cases people are even trying to transplant macrophages directly and even they are manipulating the macrophages by by gene editing they can also particularly express certain genes to uh, function in certain tissue or in certain body part i know it's a very wide topic but hope i could answer you then uh, i'll go back to the other question whether secondary infection are fatal or dreadful it could be that's the reason it it all depends for example the primary infection is there you have developed your, your immunity all your immune cells have done their job the b cells also produced antibodies that's the concept of vaccine so the vaccine what you do is you take out the bacteria or whatever you kill it then you produce the antibodies so this killed is uh, killed bacteria or whatever pathogen that is given as vaccine so that your antibodies are enhanced right so this is one example so in the secondary infection what happens if you were healthy enough there is a memory the first infection whatever has occurred the stem cells and certain cells like uh, even in uh, t lymphocytes there are memory memory cells even in b cells there are memory cells even in macrophages there are memory cells even in stem cells there is a memory cells so what happens you know the nucleus in the nucleus inside the chromosome there is a chromatin it's a kind of uh, what do you say you it's a kind of brain for it okay for the cell it's a kind of brain so everything happened before it remembers in 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 certain way or certain way so when the secondary infection occurs the, immediately the cell gets activated and then it can come back very easily because it has a memory already in the case of non immune people that means immune deprived people this is lacking and that's where the secondary infection could be fatal or dreadful for them where that's why we are taking vaccine so that uh, the known pathogens don't attack us in our whole life like bcg and uh, all the polio vaccine everything you take that's why you are never getting attacked by these pathogens in your li whole life later right yes okay and then what causes immune system to overreact yeah. so this is what it happens in the autosomal diseases the immune system when it doesn't recognize self or foreign or whatever it overreacts to the body so there could be certain uh, uh, your question is what causes 
this means there can be some genetic defect in that person it could be genetical or it need not be genetical sometimes during the evolution or during the development of a patient or a person you may get certain acquired diseases which can also affect your immune system so in this case in certain cases the immune system can underreact or in certain cases the immune system can overreact so when you when it is underreacting it becomes fatal or if you can't fight the infection if the immune system is overreacting that that's where you get autosomal diseases so that's where you that that's another condition it could be for example in the case of uh, mhc class 1 and mhc class 2 there are also syndromes uh, which are uh, particularly if they are lacking this mhc class 1 there is one uh, particular syndrome but there is no treatment for this until now but for mhc class 2 at the moment people are doing stem cell transplantation and they are correcting this for example all the cells lack mhc class 2 that means this this patient is genetically not expressing this molecule in this case we give stem cells so that these stem cells can produce more cells which has mhc class 2 so they do the job thank you prashant i think uh, students are clear with their uh, doubts and we are very happy that uh, they they came out with uh, such a lot of questions and uh, and they were uh, able to interact uh, very nicely so thank you for all your uh, answers patient uh, answering and uh, it's my pleasure thank you very much deepa <laughs> uh, um, uh, i now i call uh, sai shweta to continue I'd like to invite Ms. L. Kirbashni of Second BSc Biotechnology to propose the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, one and all. I would say that thanks are the highest form of thought, and that gratitude is doubled by wonder. Thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. And on that note, I would like to thank our beloved correspondent, Tiruke Palmi Sami Avargal, for his constant endeavors on our growth. I would like to dedicate my sincere thanks to our principal, Dr. Yen Raman Sir. for lifting us up and up through his experiences to be inspired is great but to be an inspiration is honor on that way i thank our chief guest on behalf of our institution dr prashant kumar kandalla sir staff scientist and senior post doctoral stem cells and macrophage biology lab center for regenerative therapies dresden technical university dresden at germany thank you sir for inspiring encouraging and supporting us mike heartfelt gratitude to our pillar of support and the head of the department dr c deepa ma'am for her tireless effort a delightful thanks to our faculty members for guiding us towards the wellness i extend my thank note to the heads of various departments faculty members and non teaching staffs for their guidance on our growth students too hold the gratitude for their cooperation the way a team plays as a whole determines its success finally i thank the organizing team for this successful event It's my privilege to propose the votes of thanks on this interactive occasion. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, pardon me for um, uh, intruding. <laughs> uh, I would like to share something quickly. So I would like to uh, say a, a very special thanks to Dr. Deepa. You have a very nice and motivating uh, person in your institute. I would say because. we both worked together in ccmb i know since 2003 now so since 2003 i have i am i know deepa very well and then she is she has been always a very dynamic person and very motivating person and always very cheerful and then it's very nice to have to have around such a person and very enthusiastic also and i wish her all the best like throughout her career that she does this kind of great jobs uh, and then uh, encouraging all the students and then uh, yeah please also students please uh, don't miss the opportunity you can gain lot of knowledge also from dr deepa she is such a nice person you can always approach her in very nice ways and she she is there to help you it's wonderful to have her thank you thank you prashant thank you for your words and uh, really our uh, department is very thankful to you for your nice presentation and your nice words uh, thank 
a lot and uh, we are uh, we hope uh, we'll again meet you uh, uh, with a very another uh, nice topic which will be very interesting to our students oh so, that that's uh, wonderful thank you so much okay. thank you and uh, i thank our uh, correspondent sir principal sir and uh, pd sir uh, for uh, providing the zoom link and uh, giving us uh, the technical yeah. support during oh, oh, the time oh, oh, oh. thank you thank you pd yeah. sir ingalangal thank all the ida podu ida poda sonna ida poda all the all the students uh, who were uh, patient listeners for this function thank you all and uh, thank you once again thank you one and all once again for your precious time and mark your presence here thank you thank you bye thank be, you prashant be safe be madam wind up pannikalama everyone yes sir yes sir okay madam okay thank okay, you thank you sir